This is the Slide Rule Analytics Shopify Sales Performance Dashboard. It's built in Google Data Studio, and it uses the Slide Rule Analytics Shopify Data Studio connector to pull data directly from Shopify. The advantages of using Shopify data directly as opposed to, say, Google Analytics uh, or other products is that um, you're getting the single source of truth. You're getting data from the single source of truth, which is Shopify. Shopify actually knows how many orders, uh, what your revenue is, all of the metrics that you'll see here are the most, the place that has the actual truth about that is Shopify. Instead of trying to copy it from Google Analytics and worry uh, if you change your Google Analytics configuration, uh, when you change your Google Analytics configuration, things like that, it's best just to pull that data directly from Shopify to be able to calculate uh, these sorts of metrics that we're gonna be going over today, right? Um, Cool. So there are a couple of advantages of using Google Data Studio. Uh, one is it's customizable. You can see here, this is the view, but you can come in and you can click edit and you can change this. Obviously, uh, if you use this template, uh, it will connect directly to your data. It only takes a couple of clicks to set that up, right? Um, but you can change things here. You can change how you calculate quantity or returning customer rate, right? Um, you can change these metrics. Maybe quantity isn't relevant to you and there's another KPI that's really important to you. You can update that here, right? Uh, that's the advantage of using Google Data Studio instead of pre-built analytics products, right? Okay, so let's go back to the view mode here and we're gonna go over some of these metrics, right? Um, one advantage of pulling Shopify data um, is that uh, we can uh, filter as needed uh, to design metrics that are most relevant to us. So for instance, um, orders here uh, in this case are exclusive of refunds, right? Uh, you can build another page that includes refunds if you like, uh, all of that's customizable, but by default, uh, orders, revenue, and average order value are going to exclude uh, fully refunded orders. That's a little bit different than the Shopify uh, dashboard, which by default uh, excludes refunds from revenues, but doesn't exclude fully refunded orders from the order metrics. That throws off your average order value, right? Uh, you're still, if you're subtracting the refunded revenue, uh, if you're subtracting refunded orders from revenue, but not from the number of orders, your average order value is gonna be lower than it actually is because you're still dividing by fully refunded orders. That's just the way Shopify, uh, Shopify's default dashboard works. Um, so, uh, here, we're excluding refunds, right? Uh, we think that's the best way uh, to, think about, um, to think about these metrics is just a fully refunded order. It's like it's never happened. You could create uh, another page for refunds if that's a concern. Um, but as far as average order value, it's just best to filter those out, right? Cool. Other things you'll see here, uh, returning customer rate. Uh, the quantity, we also show uh, revenue and orders over time, right? Uh, and then the top products by quantity sold. So the actual uh, quantity of men's t-shirts, for instance, that were sold. We'll show you orders by region as well. This is the overview page, um, but you can adjust this. Uh, this is showing the last seven days, uh, but you could tell it to show uh, this year to date. Right. Um, one cool thing that I like about Data Studio uh, is you can design these uh, charts here uh, to, sh to uh, drill up to different levels. So, for instance, if I'm looking at this year to date, it might make more sense to look at a monthly level like this instead of a daily level. Right. Um, and then you can see this just updates automatically. It just updates that quickly. Right. Over here, you'll see the uh, comparison to the previous period. Uh, so we're looking at January uh, 1st to April 27th. It's looking at the previous period and giving you a comparison here, right? Uh, so uh, doing a lot better in this store than we were the previous three months, right? Cool. Um, other cool things about Data Studio, you can download data directly here. You can download it to a CSV. You could export it to Sheets if you want to take a look at it, right? All of that's available on uh, almost all of these charts that we're going to look at. Right. Uh, this connector uh, updates every night at midnight, uh, so you're never going to see out-of-date data. It pulls the previous six months of data 
automatically every night at at midnight. Um, so it's always going to be uh, up to date, uh, as up to date as possible. So whenever you click last seven days, you know, that really does mean the previous seven days. Uh, you don't have to worry about when the report is updated. So for instance, I'm filming this today is April 28th, and you can see it's updated uh, last night. Um, so it's already got yesterday's data pulled in. Cool. Uh, this is the overview page. Uh, we also have other pages here. So we've got orders uh, where we show order KPIs. Again, some of the things are just repeated for clarity like orders revenue and average order value, but you'll also see things like orders with discount. Uh, you'll see the average quantity ordered, right? Uh, over here again, you'll see revenue and orders over time. Uh, down here, you'll see average order value and median order value. And there are other metrics you could add here. You could add the total price like that. Uh, you could add subtotal price. Uh, that's uh, the total price is the total price, the total of all line items, right? Um, as opposed to, so that's exclusive of shipping and things like that, right? Um, cool. So uh, one thing I want to talk about real quick here is how uh, our Data Studio connector is a little bit different than some of the other things on the market. The main difference is we pull row level data. So we're actually pulling the orders in from Shopify uh, when, we, uh, when we pull that every night at midnight. Uh, what that means is we can calculate metrics from the bottom up instead of just from the top down. So this is a good example of that. Theoretically, you can calculate average order value from the top down. What I mean by that is you could just divide the total revenue by the number of orders and get the average order value, right? Um, so long as you're not filtering or anything like that, uh, you can just take those top level metrics, revenue and order, and uh, divide it and end up with average order value. But you can't get median order value that way. For median order value, you actually need to have every order and you need to go calculate what the median is, right? So uh, one thing that this chart compares is average order to median order value, right? Uh, there is no one right way to look at central tendency. It's important to look at all of them. Uh, so average, median, and modal. We'll get to modal in a second. The only way to get median and modal is to actually pull uh, all of the orders in. And that's what our connector does. It pulls row level data. By that, I mean it pulls every single order. So what that means is you have the freedom to calculate any metric you're interested in. You can filter by anything you're interested in. So for instance, if you wanted to filter, what is the average order value of orders that contain at least one men's t-shirt? You could select this here, right? And you'll see that it updates, right? Just like that. Uh, you could add any filter you're interested in, anything that's relevant to you. You can update this dashboard with that because we're pulling row level data, right? Uh, cool. One other cool thing uh, about row level data, I mentioned modal. Uh, you can actually do a full order value variance like this. Sometimes the best way to see your data is not to look at one metric like average or median, but to look at a graph like this, right? So we can can see here, right? Most the modal orders uh, are about twenty dollars. They're between twenty and thirty dollars is the modal order value. But we can see the distribution here is not normal, right? Uh, it's not something where maybe the average is representative. We can see that a lot of people are buying or spending between ninety and a hundred dollars uh, uh, on a single order, right? Uh, so we could dig into that. We could look at. We could filter. Hey, for orders that are between ninety and a hundred, we could filter that up here, right? I want to see, uh, you know, what are those people like? What, what, do they have anything in common? Are they ordering from the same city, the same region? Uh, what are they new customers, returning customers? Uh, I can do that. And that's, uh, that is much more, it's much more obvious to see that that's one of the dynamics happening at our store with a graph like this order value variance than it is just looking at uh, numbers like just individual numbers like average order value. So that's an advantage of that, right? Um, okay. And then over here, you know, we've got medium, maximum, standard deviation, uh, other things you might want to know about your order value variance, right? We can see orders broken down by region, by city. We can see new versus returning customers. What's the difference? Uh, how many are there, right? Are they, this is interesting, new, new, new customers are spending more, right? Um, the returning customers are spending less, right? We can see top orders down here. We can look at what were the top orders for 
uh, for this time period, right? Uh, one cool thing I like about this is we click, uh, you can go directly uh, to the order. If you click on that, it will open it directly in Shopify, right? So you can actually look at that order and see what's going on. Cool. Um, next, we have the customers page. So this shows us our customer KPIs. Uh, that's the number of customers, the returning customer rate, how much they're spending on average, right? Um, so that's broken down by new and returning customers here, right? You can see that, right? Uh, we've got a graph over here on the right. Um, so very similar to the previous one, but instead of uh, orders, this is the number of customers, right? Um, we can see customers broken down by region, by city, and then we can see top customers here too, right? Uh, so again, we have a link to uh, that customer in Shopify, right? Uh, that's, that's a cool perk. <clears throat> And then finally, uh, we've got products, right? Uh, so this is our performance by product. So we can see that by product name. Uh, this is something that uh, if you're using just the default Google Analytics Shopify plugin, uh, you'll notice that uh, that plugin does not actually uh, send the correct product name to Shopify. It shows the product, it sends the product full name, which is the product name plus uh, the variance, right? Um, so if that's the case, if you're using that plugin, you won't be able to see your performance by actual just high level product like we have here. Um, you'll need something like this, right? Again, uh, over here, you can drill down, but you could see uh, price, total quantity, you could see discounts, right? Things like that. Cool. Uh, this also broken down by variant. So if you want to see what size and colors, for instance, if you own a clothing store are performing the best, you can see that here. And then it's also broken down by SKU, which is the full product name, right? So product like this. This is what you would see in Google Analytics if you use the default plugin. Again, assuming all of that data is correct, right? Um, so you can see that here. You can see all three of these. You could drill down. You could look at individual products. You could filter by SKU. SKU, uh, you could filter by price, right? Um, great. Cool. A couple of other things I want to point out about this. Uh, this dashboard is um, meant to be sort of a high level dashboard. Uh, it helps get you started. We think it shows most of the metrics uh, that are going to be critical to every store. But one of the great things about using the Google Data Studio connector is it's customizable. So in this documentation, uh, we list uh, all the, uh, all the uh, fields that are available. So you can see there's a bunch that we haven't talked about here, right? Uh, you could filter by subscription, right? So if you use recharge or bold subscriptions, you can filter by subscription uh, and see uh, we could see revenue by subscription, for instance. So the way we would do that is we would come here. I could go edit <clears throat> like so, and say I wanted to change this from revenue to just revenue from subscriptions, right? I could just come in here and I could go, let's add a filter, right? All I want is subscription orders, right? And I could create a real quick filter. Let's take a look at that filter real quick, right? That is include only orders that are subscriptions where subscription is true. Now, the demo store doesn't provide subscriptions. So the revenue is gonna be zero there, that's correct. But if you have subscriptions in your store, again, through either bold or recharge, uh, you can use that to see subscription revenue, right? Uh, if you have, uh, if you use rebuy for one-click upsells, right? One tricky thing about average order values is how do you account for one-click upsells? Rebuy, it turns out, in inserts a new order in Shopify's database for, um, for, uh, for the individual rebuy order. So it happens after the user makes a checkout, they place their primary order, they get presented with a new uh, one-click upsell option, right? And they click it and they add it and they buy it. Well, that's a new order in the Shopify database. But really, we don't wanna think about that as a different order uh, for average order value purposes, right? Because if we did, it would bring down the average order value. Well, we could account for that in here because we can see whether or not something is a rebuy order, right? So I could say, um, show me all the show me the revenue for all orders, including rebuys, but filter out 
uh, non-rebuy orders, right? Uh, or filter out rebuy orders from the number of orders in the denominator of average order value. And I could see that, right? Uh, I could, I could uh, actually construct metrics that are more specific to my store. Uh, that's an advantage of using Google Data Studio like that and pulling in the row level data like we talked about. Cool, so there's a ton of metrics you can use here, ton of dimensions uh, and metrics down here, right? Uh, we didn't go over all of them, right? Um, but uh, the point is, this is really sort of a platform for creating uh, the charts and metrics and data that you need that's specific to your store, so that way you uh, can develop uh, and find the insights that you need uh, to run your store. Your store is not generic, that's why you built it in Shopify. Uh, and this Data Studio connector uh, and this dashboard helps you uh, get the metrics you need to improve your store. So uh, thanks for watching this video and let me know if you have any questions.